right on time as well. And um, so today we're going to be doing some DIY um, bug hotel and bee hotels. I've grouped them all together. They are going to be our pollinator hotels today. And um, we're going to be making two um, that are quite easy to make. They don't require a lot of um, materials. And um, the first one is um, accessible to all ages and all abilities. And the second one's a little step up um, and you will require some kind of, um, not they're not um, expensive piece of equipment, but you might need to buy them ahead of time. Whereas the first one, you can literally just go out and do it straight away. Um, but to start off with, um, we are going to just go through a little bit about um, what B and Bug hotels are and also who they're for. And that's really important. We want to get this right before we start making. So if anybody's looked up kind of bee and bug hotels, um, you'll find there are just too many to choose from. They come in every shape and size. You can find some great pictures of people who've made their own. You can buy flat pack ones that you then assemble, um, which are great as gifts. I've been to a few sites where they have like massive bee and bug hotels. Um, they're huge, something that you probably are not going to want in your garden. But if you have a school, that might be something that interests you. You can find some that have, um, are like using homemade um, or household materials like this mug here. Um, you might have seen them in garden centres. Sometimes they look really fancy um, and they can be quite expensive as well. Um, or maybe you've seen kind of these massive structures at schools um, or in other people's gardens and would like to recreate one, for, maybe not on that bigger scale, but for your own garden, smaller scale. There are just too many to choose from, but they all have some um, vital pieces of information that are the same. No matter what type of bee and bug hotel you're buying, you still need the same things. And that is um, knowing your target bug or bee. So um, it's all about location and it's all about the materials you're using. They are going to be different depending on whether you want to attract um, maybe a bumblebee to a solitary bee or maybe a butterfly to a, another bug. And, and when we say bug, um, we mean lots of invertebrates, not just um, bees and butterflies. I'm also including um, woodlouse, worms, snails and slugs into this um, kind of like bug hotel category. So location and materials. They are really important, we need to get those right. So we've got a bees who's who. Most of the bee hotels that um, you would buy and the one, one of, that we're gonna make today um, is for solitary bees. But not all solitary bees are going to be able to use the bee hotel. So you might have seen some like this and they've got these tubes in. Only some solitary bees use these bee hotels. So I've got, um, three photos and three names. So in the chat, or you can just kind of guess on, kind of draw lines with your fingers and please don't annotate on the PowerPoint just so we don't give it away. And um, which photo matches with which kind of group of solitary bees. So we've got mason bees, leaf cutter bees and mining bees. So. Um, fire away in the chat if you um, want to have a go at guessing um, which um, photo links to which bee. Fantastic, I can see some people are doing that. I'll give you a few more minutes. Okay, right, so number one, it is in the ground, this um, solitary bee. They are our mining bees. Um, these are bees that um, they dig um, underground. The females, they um, make a cake with um, the pollen and nectar and then they lay their egg on top of the pollen and then they kind of leave the little cavity underground and then they sometimes will have many cavities under their 
with lots of different bees or they sometimes depending on the species will just have um one whole per kind of um new bee that will be growing in there and um, one species that is really beautiful and quite easy to identify is the tawny mining bee they're bright orange um, and they're really hairy um, I've spotted loads of these when I've gone on walks and um, if you kind of get your eye in looking at um, the flowers down the lanes and um, especially like the really big ones that are like um, kind of the wild carrots and um, spotting those on there are easy just because they're so orange. Our second one um, we're looking at this plug here in the tube it's our leaf cutter bee and a species that you might be able to spot is the silvery leaf cutter bee. So they cut pieces of leaf, leaves and um, circles and then they drag them to the tubes and then they use those to line the tubes and to make um, the segments which they then um, make a pollen cake and then they lay their, um, uh, their egg on that pollen cake. The last one um, is our mason bees. So our mason bees are the ones that it, you may have spotted um, using these type of bee hotels, so the ones with um, the bamboo. They plug up their um, tubes um, with kind of this papery soil um, and um, they again they make cases um, through the tubes. And the species that you will be able to spot in Jersey and the UK are the red mason bees. So um, the two that we're going to be um, making homes for today are the leafcutter bee and the mason bee. The mining bees, they're just going to be needing some um, soil um, with short grass. So if you're wanting to attract those ones, that's what you need to do for them. So just to show you what's going on in these tubes um, is these, they make kind of little um, cases for them. So they have their pollen mass um, and then they put their egg on the pollen mass. So when the um, larva hatches, it's got something nice to eat. And then it eats away on the um, pollen mass as it develops um, into an adult. And it um, kind of um, cocoons itself as a, um, a pupa um, and then it will emerge um, during the spring time. Um, but before it does that, it's got to wait for the other um, the bees at the end, closest to the end, to emerge first. So the males, they're right at the, the front. So they emerge first and they hang around um, and they're waiting for the females to then come out. So they then start pushing their way through um, the other walls that have been vacated by the bees before them. Um, and as they emerge, the males are waiting there um, to mate. Um, once they've mated, um, the females then, they start looking for these empty tubes to start the process all over again. So that's one of the um, species we're going to be um, making a hotel for today. Um, one that you might want to attract is bumblebees. They are quite difficult to attract to your garden and it can take quite a few years. Um, but don't be disheartened and um, persevere with trying to get bumblebees in your garden. It would be something really amazing to have. Um, they are social bees, so they live as a colony. Um, sometimes they nest underground and sometimes they nest in trees. They are tree bumblebees. Um, people sometimes have spotted them using bird boxes um, as um, an alternative to kind of the rotting um, holes in trees that they would normally use um, and the reason why these would be lovely to have in your garden is they do survive sometimes over winter so there's one species that definitely we know survives over winter and it's the buff tail bumblebee so they can um, be spotted during winter and um, still taking advantage of some of the flowers that are out um, but some most of the species the um, females they all die and it's only the queens that survive and they go off, they leave the nest, and then they hibernate. And the great thing about having um, a bumblebee, and I've got a link if anyone does want to make a bumblebee um, nest box, is you can actually have a look inside to see what's going on, which I think would be really cool to do. And um, if you do it at night time, when the bumblebees are all asleep, you can open the lid, have a look, and um, without 
kind of the bees all attacking you. Um, you can also make them so that they have a plastic um, lid on so you can open the lid, have a look at what you've got and then pop the lid back down. We've got a question. Oh wow, so Sophie said, since your last presentation, they've gained a bumble in our garden and he likes the lavender. So um, it's not all about the solitary um, bees, you can get bumblebees and it's not all about the bee hotels, you do have to provide something for them to feast on as well. Don't forget about some plants. So um, quickly moving on, some bugs. Um, butterflies, they will not be using your bee hotel during the summer, they're going to be looking um, for other butterflies. Um, they will be sleeping on plants during the day, um, during the night, sorry, um, and moths will be sleeping on the plants during the day. And they will be using your bug hotel when it comes to hibernation. There's a few species that hibernate. They're looking for these really tightly packed small spaces, which um, one of the um, bug hotels we're going to make today will suit butterflies. Um, earwigs, sometimes you'll see um, people have put straw in bug hotels, this is for earwigs. They um, like straw or wood wool um, for kind of their ideal house. Um, and lots of sticks are suitable for ladybugs. Um, they like the small cavities in between the sticks that they wedge themselves in between. So um, we're gonna start get making now um, and we need to talk about housing. So this is what you're going to put the materials in. It needs to be waterproof if you're going to leave it out. So I suggested a metal food can. You can either um, keep the back on or um, you can remove it so that you have a hollow tube like this one here. So metal can is a fantastic housing. Also um, a milk carton. They're plastic, they keep the milk in, they keep the rain out as well. Um, so these are still really good for um, making a bee and bug hotel. Does anyone want to guess what this is? Have a um, post in the chat. I'll let you think about that one. Now, another housing that you could use is a bird box and um, so this is a, a bird box that we're going to be using today to build our bug hotel in and um, you're wanting one with an open front and um, sometimes you can buy them where they um, are meant to be used for bird feeders and they don't have this bit at all they just have this is where you would put the bird seed these are great houses for using and um, to kind of adapt them into bug and bee hotels Fab, um, we've got PVC pipe, drain pipe, plumbing pipe. Yes, it is. It's um, drain pipes. And um, these are great for using as um, bug and bee hotel housing. Now, how do you get them? You don't buy them. You ask a builder. Ask a builder for their offcuts. Now, these come in really long tubes that then the builders fit to the house and there'll always be a few offcuts. And... Um, so find your local builder and see if they've got any kind of short ones of these lying around that you could um, chop up into shorter um, lengths. Now this one here is 15 centimetres. You could make them longer if you wanted to. Um, wooden boxes, bird houses, plastic bottles. Um, are, are, if you've got them lying around and you um, kind of don't use them anymore, um, they are something that you can use to make um, use your, as your housing. But yeah, today we're going to be starting off with our food can and our milk carton. Okay, so our first one um, is our general bug hotel. So our target, who's our target bug? These are invertebrates that feed on dead, rotting wood. And where are we going to put this location? It's going to be on the ground. The things you're going to need are lots of sticks. You need sticks of various thickness, thicknesses, um, widths, um, and also lengths. Now I'm going to use my metal can to um, make this one. It doesn't matter if you've not got the end in, 
but what we're going to do is we're going to put it down on the table like this. And I'm going to fill this with sticks. Um, I did say it was easy, it's nice and simple. Um, what you want to do is you want to fill them um, so that there are still some sticks sticking out of the can. What we're going to do is we're going to lay it on the ground like this. So we want some of the wood to get wet because these invertebrates are like dead rotting wood and we don't want it to stay dry. But then we've still got a lovely little space in between here that um, they can use um, to kind of escape predators, to hide, um, maybe if they don't like the rain so much. Um, this is a fantastic one. So I'm going to go ahead and start um, sticking them in. We don't want them too long. So if they are really long, you will need to snap them in half and then just fill them, fill your can. I would always start with the thicker sticks first. And then these tiny thin ones we'll use to fill the, the little gaps. And the reason we're doing this standing up is that even if we have a hole on the bottom, there's um, no chance that you're going to kind of, it's going to be quite tricky to fit them in without them fitting one in and then pushing the rest out by sitting it like this. You've got something hard, the table to press on as you're filling your can. You can put pine cones in here. Um, you might be able to collect some bark, anything that is um, wood. And if you can get untreated wood, um, even better. Now these are sticks that I just collected on a walk along a lane. So they're not fancy sticks. I haven't bought them. They are just from the lane. Now it's getting quite tight in there. So I'm going to start with my thinner ones. The thinner ones fill all the gaps, but I don't want to fill it so tightly that animals can't get in. So I think I'll put a few more little ones in there and then I'm going to leave it. There we go. Really easy this one and then I'm going to lay it down on the ground like that. If you have got one that's got a hole in the end, you will need to be a bit more careful when you lift it up in that it doesn't just kind of all drop out underneath you. And kind of the um, way that I would do it is just ease it slowly. And if you look down it and you can still see lots of light coming through, you need to fill a little bit more and, and really wedge those sticks in. And that's why these thin ones kind of are kind of doing the job. They're squishing them in between these chunky ones. That's our first one. Um, really nice and easy. Um, you don't need to buy anything apart from the food can that you're eating out of. Give it a good wash. Um, you also might want to remove the um, label, the paper label, so that isn't going in your garden. Um, and you'll want to position it somewhere um, where there's soil, um, down like this. And then the animals will munch away on this dead rotting wood um, and then they'll hide at the back. Now what you'll find over time is that this will start rotting away. Um, animals will eat it and they'll turn it back into the soil. So you'll need to do a bit of maintenance where you maybe go out and collect some sticks and then you refill your bug hotel. Um, you can also empty them. So maybe you've had yours lying on the ground for a month and you really want to know what's going on in there. Um, get a, a tray um, that you maybe eat on, um, give it a wipe down and empty your bug hotel um, to see what's in there. Um, there might be some animals, there might not. Maybe you need to leave it out or move the position where it is. Um, and then you can just kind of repack it into your can or your carton or your um, drain pipe and then pop it back in the garden. That's our first one. Now the second one requires a little bit more forward planning. I made a mess, there's lots of 
tiny bits of twigs everywhere. Um, this one um, is for our, our bee hotel and it's specifically for our solitary bees. So for our leaf cutter bees um, and our mason bees, and we've got a photo here of a leaf cutter and um, bee taking some leaves to one of those tubes. Now the tubes that you can get, um, you can um, just use bamboo tubes. Now I went to the garden centre and I found this, which is a bamboo border. So it would go around somebody's garden. And I've basically chopped the wire that holds it together. I've taken the bamboo off, there they are, and I'm going to use these as my tubes. And um, it's a really um, economic way to get bamboo. Um, you could grow it if you've got space, it grows really fast. Um, or you could get these um, cardboard tubes, which you can buy and they come in different widths and they are specifically solitary bee um, cardboard tubes. So I've got a few here today. They normally come in packs of about 50, so you, you don't really need to buy more than one um, for if you're making one bee. So these are cardboard tubes. They're quite thick cardboard, they're not like um, the cardboard in your um, loo roll or um, your um, kind of, yeah, paper. Um, they are quite thick and sturdy, so they are still um, going to be hard to get soaked if they get wet. So for this one, um, I'm going to be showing you a technique to make these, which are the paper tubes that you can put inside the bamboo or the cardboard tubes. And this is because um, we need to clean these out at the end of the, the year. And you can also um, take out the um, adult bee cocoons and keep them over winter and then we put them back in your solitary bee hotel. Um, so this is why I'm going to show you how to make these. So to make these little paper we need some paper. You can buy them but um, it is just kind of paper tubes. So why not make them? So you need some paper, you need a pair of scissors, you need two pencils um, and some sellotape and then you might want a ruler so that you can measure um, for your tubes. Just got a question. Is there a minimum or maximum radius in case I want to try to recycle old sticks? Um, so if you Google um, yeah, their requirements, some websites will say that these tubes are too big, but I've got photos of um, bees with the ends blocked up, so they can use them. Um, yeah, sometimes you, you can buy um, in the garden centres like the really long strips of bamboo that are used for pea, pl um, pea planting, where you like stake them in, and the peas grow up them and um, these are a lot smaller if I compare the size that's kind of the size difference that we've got here and um, these are are just as good they will fill these it just takes them a little bit more work and um, obviously because there's more room for them to have to, to fill the space so your paper if you're starting with an A4 size we need to split this into three so um, I, you can do it with a ruler if you've got one, or you can just fold it over and then squish it roughly so that it's kind of roughly into, into thirds. Then you unfold it and we're going to cut um, down here so we end up with these strips which we'll use to roll to make um, like these paper bits. So that's what we need, we need strips of paper. Once we've got our strips, 
we need some pencils and you'll need to get some sellotape. Now I don't have a sellotape like dispenser um, so I've just stuck loads of sellotape to the side and um, you might want to, if you're doing this with lots of, of people you might want to get one of the sellotape dispensers, it is easier. Right, so one piece of paper and a pencil and you're going to roll the paper around the pencil. Now if your pencil is too short for your paper, don't worry, just pop it in the middle and roll and you'll find the, the ends will just kind of, they'll go along with it without there being a bit of pencil there. And we're going to roll. All the way like this. Now the reason that I said two pencils is we don't want this pencil to stay in there and if your paper is quite long it's hard to get the pencil out so then you just use another pencil to help get it out and there is our tube. Now we're not going to use any sellotape yet we're going to put it in the tube um, to start off with. So we've got an empty one. In it goes. And then when you let it go, it fills the space. So you don't need to worry about measuring the radius. Um, it will fill the space. If you've got some bamboo that have got and kind of this knot in them. I'm just letting somebody in. Um, you um, will find that there's a, a wall. I think I've got one. Here we go. Um, there is the knot here, and then there's the wall. Um, so you'll find if you've got some where the knot is in the middle, you will only really have a short, um, I'll take it out, a, a bit of short paper to fill um, and you might need to just kind of cut it so that it's flush with the end of the bamboo or the cardboard tube. Now with these ones and the ones that you get from the garden centre we've still got this hole all the way through um, and our bees they want something blocking one end. Now if you're using a can the end of the can will be the block. So you don't need to worry about sellotaping it up. Again, with my big hotel here, when I put them in, the back wall here is going to be the block. With my milk carton, again, it's got an end tube. I don't need to worry about it blocking it, me having to block it up. But if I'm using something like this, I will need to block one of these ends up. And that's why you need some sellotape. So you take one side out and you just squish it like that. Fold the edges in a little bit. And then you need to get some sellotape. Step to the side of my table. And then I'm sellotaping that end in. Open it up a little bit as much as you can and then squash it back into your hotel. Now you've got your blocked end and your open end. So that will be fine for my open ended um, tube here. Now one thing that when we're making our, um, our bee hotels is we want them to be waterproof and we don't want these tubes getting wet. As soon as they start to get wet, they rot, even the bamboo. Um, and especially if you've bought bamboo, um, like I have, that's got holes. I do not want these to get wet because I don't want the bees to rot in the tubes. So you need to make sure if you are going to be putting them um, outside, they need to be chopped so that they are the same or smaller than your housing.
This is why I like milk cartons because they are quite long and you only really need to chop a little bit. If you're going to use, this is why I like using these, is because they've got a sloping roof that the water will fall off of. So even if maybe I made them in here, I could fill um, part of my housing with my solitary bees. Like this. And then I could still maybe put some sticks um, and straw. I've got lots of space to use. I don't have to fill it all with tubes. And I've got this sloping roof for the rain. So I'm going to show you how to make those tubes one more time. So we need our strip of paper and our pencil. Our pencil is in the middle and then we just roll. We use our second pencil to push out the one that was holding it all together. I'm still holding on tight. I'll show you with the bamboo. Pop it in into the bamboo all the way. Let it go and then it fills the tube like that. This one fills it pretty much perfectly. Um, so I did say that you could um you might need some string, and the reason is if if you're going to be filling your housing and you don't want to fill it all and um, kind of fit in lots of these, maybe you only want like a small segment and um, filled with your bamboo tubes. Um, and with your milk carton, um, if you're filling them, sometimes it is easier to bundle them all together first. So let's get my, my tubes together. Now I need to check that the ends that are open they are the ends that are going to be facing outwards. So many times I see the hotels where all you can see are like the um, blocked up ends um, on the outside and then the actual end that the bee is supposed to be using is on the inside. This is no good. A bee will not be using something that short. It needs them a little bit longer. So remember to put them all the right way around. And then I can use string or an elastic band to tie them all together. And then I can put these in here and maybe I'm, I might want to fill the rest with some sticks. I like this because then you are spreading out the bees and you're not having loads of them together. And now, if you've got one that hasn't got um, kind of like, it's not a big um, bee hotel um, or a bird box, it's something like this, like our carton, you need to put them somewhere. So we're going to get onto where you put them. That's what um, you'll get at the end or just like this one here. And then I've got my blocked up holes and I still have a few more to do. So where are you going to put them? So you can put these quite high up. So they can go in trees, they can go on fences, and you will need something to attach them to a structure. So with tubes, you um, might want to put some wire around and kind of really tape it. If this is the tree branch, you really want to get it um, snug to the tree. With your bird box, you'll want to use nails. Um, or um, cable ties or wire again to make sure that it's um, attached to a structure or a fence post. The one thing that I often see is that people use string and string's no good. If you have your bee hotel like this, people do this. You, I see your bee hotel is just like this it's not sturdy enough for, um, for the bees. They want it tight and they want it attached to something so that it's not blowing around in the wind or um, potentially that the string might snap and the bees that are still in there um, fall on the ground. 
um, in their tubes. We want it somewhere sturdy. Now, I've helped make one where I didn't need um, anything to kind of attach it. I didn't need anything sturdy because I'd already had my big structure. This is great for schools, um, or maybe you've got a garden big enough to make a little one. What you'll need are some sturdy structures. So um, some bricks, some larger pieces of wood can keep your um, carton um, in a structure. And then you can use the um, things like slate. Um, in this one, we've got um, yeah, some other pieces of wood as well to wedge them in to make sure that they're not going to kind of it's not just all going to blow away after your hard work, especially if you're having to cut some bamboo strips. Um, you want to make sure there is something on top of your carton to keep the bees warm and also the rain off them. So um, slate is a, or broken up tiles, or just, yeah, some um, bricks on top of them. Okay. Um, so this is one that my colleague Nina and her family made. So we've got bricks here, we've got wood to make the different layers. And um, your um, carton one would easily just slot in there um, without having to kind of um, buy any attachments like nails or um, wire, you could just slot it in. Now, sometimes what we see is chicken wire. This is great if you've got a bug and bee hotel like this one and you want to make it into different sections. Maybe you want to fill one area with lots of wood um, and it's um, kind of all fall out. You could use chicken wire to um, kind of grate it up um, so it's easy for you to kind of make segments and then pop your bamboo in there. Although sometimes what we see is pine cones, pine cones, they um, are not going to be great for bees, um, but they will be great for our bug hotel. Um, um, but they do need to start to be getting a little bit wet and rotting. So I would say take them out of your um, bee hotel and put them on the floor somewhere or maybe use them in this um, bug hotel. They need to rot away for the invertebrates to start eating them. So um, you've pop, put them up um, and putting them up um, will require um, you to put them kind of off the ground. Don't put these ones on the ground, the ones with our bamboo for our bees need to be slightly raised. And then you just wait. Um, it is a waiting game whenever you put anything out for wildlife. Um, but there's some places where you can put thing, these boxes to kind of maximise the potential that they're going to be filled. So you want to put them somewhere sunny. Um, so that they are in a sheltered area. Make sure you've got your tubes the right way around so we've not got a blocked up end on the outside here. Our blocked up ends need to be at the back. Um, you can make sure that they're, um, they're waterproof. What the female will do is she'll suss out, she'll have a look in first and um, before making her decision on whether to um, put her eggs in there. And um, if you do have any that have um, they've emerged, this is what it will look like. There'll be a little hole. Um, and what you can do is you can take them out. Um, and this is why I've asked you to make these paper tubes. And it's because bee hotels, they do need some upkeep. They do need these tubes replacing. And it's to do with these pollen mites. They live on the bees and then they, um, when the female goes in to lay her eggs, the pollen mites jump off um, and then they eat the pollen and they'll eat the eggs. Um, and by having these tubes, what you can do is um, when it gets to kind of the end of um, summer and um, autumn time, you can take these tubes out, you can unroll them, and you can have a look at the cocoons and you can take the cocoons and wash them and make kind of get rid of the pollen mites 
and um, you can then store them over winter somewhere cool and dry and um, some um, websites say you can refrigerate them but you do need to make make sure the humidity levels are correct and that you're not just going to um, kill the bees in their cocoons um, in your fridge you need to make sure that the humidity is right by maybe laying some damp kitchen towels and you can buy um, humidity levels to put in your fridge if you do want to do that but lots of websites say you can just put them in a, a tin um, and store them somewhere cool and dry um, and then and um, when it's springtime again you pop them back so let's say you've got your new tubes with your new paper in and um, you can pop them and the bees in their cocoons on top somewhere um, sheltered, somewhere sunny, and then they will hatch out. Um, and this way you've got rid of the pollen mites, you've cleaned out your tubes as well, so that there's no pollen mites um, kind of in there waiting for a female to come in. It's also quite difficult to know when they're fully empty. So I wouldn't recommend you remove these tubes if um, you haven't put your paper in them. Um, and this is because they get really dark. Let's see if I've got one to show you, right here. Like, there's no way that you're going to be able to know whether there's a bee in the back of there. If I've not put a tube, I don't know. And if I remove that, I'm potentially removing a bee from its habitat. With the paper, I can remove the bees in their cocoons you can then um, make sure that they are in a safe space in the um, kind of the plastic trays in your refrigerator or somewhere in a, in a tin cool and dry ready for next year and you've changed this and gotten rid of the pollen mites so that's why I, I kind of, I've gone with this method today um, if you buy a bee hotel you can do exactly the same and just fill your tubes with paper. So that's what they look like when you take them out. Um, they just, they look like seeds. Um, and yeah, you can wash them, um, you dry them and then you store them and they um, will keep over winter and then they will hatch in the springtime. Now sometimes you can buy um, bee hotels that have like a little emergence area and that's where you put your um, solitary bees that you've kept and um, essentially all it is is just a box with a hole so I don't see why you couldn't just adapt that and make that um, yourself by um, drilling a hole there and putting a piece of wood on top that you could then put these um, bee cocoons in that's all they are is just a box um, that's somewhere nice and sunny and um, in the springtime. So um, I've already talked a little bit about positioning. So um, yeah, you if you've got your cartons, you want to put them somewhere where they're weighted down and they're waterproof, especially if you've got a few tubes overhanging, you still want something on top um, so that these tubes don't get wet. And um, yeah, a south facing wall, fence. Now bumblebees, if you're wanting to go for the bumblebee route, um, you'll need to dig your um, bee hotel underground and I've got some links if anybody wants to um, make one of those and um, then they're at the end. Um, so for mason bees, um, we're wanting these to be around 30 centimetres off the ground so they do need to be a little way off. So they need to be about a ruler's Height off the ground. Um, however, if you're wanting to attract um, some leaf cutter bees for these tubes, um, you can go higher. So you can put them on a fence or a tree, maybe one meter plus. Um, and if you've got your um, your bird box and you want maybe to attract some tree bumblebees, um, you yeah, you just pop them in a tree and just wait for them to um, kind of come along. Now there's loads of um, DIY inspiration out there and um, 
I hope I've given you some um, kind of key things to look out for and how to kind of adapt these tubes so that you can keep the bees happy and healthy. For our bumblebee home, and um, this is the um, best website that I have found for making a um, bumblebee um, hotel. Oh, we've got a question about positioning. Is it possible to position it on a balcony? Absolutely, balconies are still fantastic spaces for pollinators. Um, they will be flying around. You just might um, be getting the tree cutter um, bees and maybe your tree bumblebees just if you are kind of high up. Maybe if you're one story up, you might still be getting the mason bees. But yep, just make sure that it's really tightly attached to whatever you've got there and um, whether it's the if you're allowed to drill into the wall or tied to the actual kind of the balcony rails so that it doesn't move about um, and also so it doesn't just go off the balcony um, and also um, you can just google there's so many ideas and and um, inspirations that you can find just by googling um, a DIY bee hotel um, or bug hotel um, but the key things to remember is our housing. We want it to be waterproof. Um, so whether you have got one um, that is already waterproof, like plastic, or your can, or your slanted roof, or whether you are going to be putting it into a larger structure um, so that it's nice and sheltered so that these tubes don't get wet. You need to think about who is it for? Who have you built this bee or bug hotel for? Maybe do a bit of research into what animals you want to attract, whether they're going to lay on the ground and need to get these sticks wet, or whether they need to be 30 centimetres or a metre off the ground. Here's another bumblebee nest that you can make. This is from the Bumblebee Conservation Trust. Um, and they have a great um, idea of making a bumblebee nest out of um, like old um, hose pipe um, tubes, which is the entrance bit there, um, and a flower pot and some slate, um, which is such a, a genius idea um, to attract bumblebees to your garden. Um, so for more um, ideas and maybe some more ideas about how to attract bees to your garden, head along to the pollinator project. Um, there's lots of information about the types of pollinators that you can attract to your garden, as well as the plants that you'll need to go along with your um, hotels so they have something to eat. Um, and the next talk, um, uh, that I'm just going to do a bit of a, a plug here, is on the 14th of July at um, 1800 and that's British summer time for those of you who are um, coming from a different country and it's um, going to be about what to look for with um, the ones that you buy and also if you've bought one like this one um, and it's not suitable for solitary bees how to adapt them and we're not saying that don't buy them and um, and then chuck them away. No, we can adapt the ones that look gorgeous in the garden centres and um, so that they are really suitable for solitary bees. So that's when our next talk is. And I just say links. Here are some more links for you. Um, so we've got some winter husbandry for solitary bees, which goes into great detail about how you can remove your solitary bees from your bamboo or cardboard tubes, um, which is something that's really fun to do. Um, and you also learn about the bee life cycle more that way. Um, and then you do make sure that these tubes are completely clean. Yeah, and if you want to have a go at making a bumblebee nest, there's the Bumblebee Conservation Trust. Okay, um, does anybody have any questions? You can, um, I'm going to unshare my screen. Actually, no, I'll, I'll leave up these links if anyone wants to take a screenshot of, um, of the PowerPoint. <laughs>